Hello Internet, Hashi here, and it's time for a very brief episode of Cheap Tricks, where I'll teach you that the Internet can make fun of the best efforts of people who work really, really hard to make things online. God, that's a terrible intro. A little while ago, the new teaser for the quote, live action Aladdin dropped, and people got their first glimpse of the beloved Blue Genie. They universally loved it. And some people online took the opportunity to jump in and make memes, and then those memes got aggregated into articles, and then I jumped on the immature bandwagon, producing a mini satirical clip of someone attempting to make a Will Smith genie in only 15 minutes. How it turned out? You tell me. But a couple of people have asked if I'd consider making an actual tutorial out of it, and your wish is my command. First, for a little insight, I thought I'd have a little chat about the Will Smith genie with the amazing filmmaker and visual effects artist behind Corridor's incredible digital shorts, Ren. For the most part, the trailer is pretty sweet, and then you get to the very end when they show a very blue, very fake-looking Will Smith. But it's not super fake-looking. He's still, like, very obviously Will Smith. It's like you can see that it's him, but there's something very off about it, right? And it's, it's just like, it evokes this like sense of revulsion in people. That's what, what's called the Uncanny Valley. The most famous example is probably uh, the Scorpion King, where it was like, that's the rock. And I've never been more creeped out by the rock in my life. The, the Uncanny Valley itself is basically this graph where the X plot is uh, similarity to humans. And the Y plot is uh, familiarity with the genie. I think he's just past the bottom of that trough, but he hasn't reached the top because you can't even really quantify exactly what makes it creepy other than you just can tell. If you want to know more about the stuff that I've been talking about right now, I talk about that and a whole lot of other things at the TEDx talk at UPenn. So check that out. I certainly look forward to Ren's TEDx talk. Again, it's at UPenn on March 16th. Tickets are still available. Now let's make our own trek into the Uncanny Valley by making our own blue CG Will Smith. I started where I often do, on Google, where I searched for a Will Smith 3D model. And lo and behold, I get an immediate hit on Sketchfab, where I find a scan of the Fresh Prince himself. And it's actually a really great piece. So I'll click download and then save that OBJ file. Now it's easy for me to just click and have this model. But here's a small reminder that this model was uploaded and shared by another artist, specifically. Tipitat Chenavasan, I'm general partner at the Venture Reality Fund. So, uh, yeah, I'm always looking at new technologies and, you know, and there was a company called Occipital. They had a Kickstarter for a 3D camera that you could attach your iPhone to do things like 3D scanning. I went to two wax museums. I went to the one in Hollywood and the one in Vegas. And I just started scanning the random celebrity models that they had. And it was awesome. I've never actually seen anyone do anything with them uh, before. Like, I never, <laughs> like I'd never, i seen like tons of people have downloaded them, commented or liked, but no, I'd never seen the output of that. So it was very cool to see someone take one of those scans and do something so creative with it. But I mean, honestly, like I, I had little involvement like the, the effort it took for me to make the 3d model scan was like minimal it was like taking a photograph or taking a lot of photographs but yeah i mean it was a great sculpt made by i don't know some sculptor i don't know at the madame tussaud wax museum so i feel like that that person deserves the credit i've reached out to madame tussauds to ask who the primary sculptor of the will smith model was and i'll share that below if they get back to me but i do know that it was created by a team of over 15 different artists that took about three to four months to complete which is pretty amazing it was great to get to connect with Tipitat because talking to someone who created an asset you're using is a great way to remember that you're part of a community. I do a whole lot of stuff by myself, but that doesn't mean I do it alone. Moving along, Will Smith needs a fake body. So to begin, I visit our old friend and website for animated bodies, Mixamo. I started by clicking the character tab and grabbed one of their default characters called the Brute. Then I clicked on the Animation tab and searched for Talking Animations. This one right here kind of reminded me of that motion in the teaser. So I apply it. I adjust the character arm space a bit because this character is so broad. Then I simply click on Download and it'll save me a nice FBX of this animation. Now that I have my pieces, it's time to combine them. I did this in Cinema 4D. Though you could probably do the equivalent steps in Blender if you know how. I loaded the Will Smith model, and then went to point mode where I selected the vertices I didn't need, and deleted them.
Next, I use the Axis Center Tools. And these are really great because they'll automatically put the control point right in the middle of this remaining geometry. And also, if I kind of manually line up Will Smith's head with X, Y, and Z in here, I can tell it to zero out his rotation based on the world. So now I have a nicely aligned head. Next, I open the Brute FBX file. This is the animated file, so there are two main things in here. A skeleton rig that has all of the animation keyframes, and the geometry of the Brute guy in here. Now, I don't need everything that came included on this guy, so I delete his eyelashes, the eyes, and this mustache geometry. I'll keep these earrings, though. Next, I paste in my Will Smith head and try kind of aligning it and figuring out a good placement. This shows me that I still need a lot of the Brute's neck intact. So I'll hide the Will Smith for now by clicking on this dot here twice. Then I can select the Brute's body, go into point mode, and then artistically select the points on his head that I don't need and delete them. Also, his neck is a little short and I wanted to reshape it just a bit. So I went to Mesh, Transform Tools, and used the brush for this. I can turn Will's head back on and now I'm able to scale and place this head pretty nicely. I can even move his earrings into place. Should probably delete this axe sooner or later. And there we go, that's looking pretty good. Now, the Brute's geometry is already skinned on top of the skeleton. I can delete points from it, but I can't add anything without really disastrous results. So instead, I'm gonna dial down to the actual head joint in the skeleton and place Will's head here. This will actually keep his head in the right position. And previewing everything here, we seem to be on the right track. To make him a little bit more genie-like, let's select the head, and in point mode, I can use that mesh brush again to kind of vulcanize his ears. I needed to add a braid on top of his head and his two famous bracelet cuffs. So I just added a bunch of primitives and used some deformers like this to make the braids and also just made some tapered tubes for his cuffs. Now, like with the head, I nested each of these pieces within the skeleton, so when he moved, everything moved in the right place. Next, I selected everything, grouped it, and named my group Genie. This allowed me to use Riptide Pro to export the animation as an OBJ sequence. If you don't have that option, you can also try things like Steady Bake, that has a feature called XREC, which allows you to export Cinema 4D sequences, which can also be read in Element 3D. Then it's finally time to move into After Effects. I create a new HD comp, add a solid, add element, and then import my 3D sequence. I don't mind that he's missing his textures, because I plan to mess with those anyway. So I load in the texture file that came with Will Smith's head and make a pre-comp out of that called Face. If I place an instance of this in my Genie comp, I can then go to Elements Custom Layers and then select Face as one of my textures. I also tell it to just use the first frame, which I assume keeps the processing lighter. So now in my scene setup, I can click on the head texture and easily select that layer as my diffuse texture. I repeat the same steps for the Brute's body texture, making a pre-comp and then selecting that layer as a custom texture. And now he's all textured up, but he needs to be bluer, balder, and not have those tattoos. So in each of these pre-comps, I dive into the layer and do all of that kind of work in After Effects instead of Photoshop, so I can just see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'll start with the body, where I can clone stamp away the tattoos. Then I can add CC toner with a nice blue tint.
Once I'm liking that, I can copy that instance of CC Toner over to my face comp and apply it. And now check it out, he's blue, Dabu D. But he still could be balder. Now, one of the things I've learned about working with photogrammetry files is that as they come in, their textures are whack. Now, there are ways to help optimize this UV process, none that I'm gonna bother with now. I'm gonna do my best shot at cloning away his hairline and painting in blue kind of all around his head. It's a little tricky to guess the right parts to color in here, but by going to View, New Viewer, I can create a split window where I can watch my result update live as I work. Now it's not perfect, but I'm going for fast, not perfect. I throw on some stock textures for his cuffs, hair, and pants. I create a couple of lights to make him look a little bit better. One yellowish glow, kind of from in front, coming from the floor, and one really bright rim light behind him, hitting his shoulder and the side of his face. I enable the ambient occlusion and enable the shadows to make him look a little better. I also create a null for this element group to give him just a bit of a floaty motion as he comes up toward camera. Up close I notice that his eyes are looking a little bit too blue, so I'm going to jump in and do some spot color correction on them in the texture layer, which is automatically updated over here. Alright, time is short, so what's the laziest way to create a backdrop for this? How about a Google image search for treasure cave. We'll grab something that's 2K or bigger and labeled for reuse with modification. I don't know, this one. I'll throw it on a 3D card back here. I'll tint it kind of bluish with gold highlights and add a camera blur effect. Next, I'll add in some assets from Action VFX this dust effect, to be precise. I'll turn it into a 3D card, and then I'll tint one of them blue and place it in front of the genie, and I'll tint another kind of orangey and place it behind him. Next, I can add a top adjustment layer where I can throw on magic bullet looks. I like jumping in here at the end of a project because it's a quick way to look at some different options that I'd never considered, and also some of these options really tie together some of my sloppier color correction. I'm gonna go with Kruger. And then lastly, I'll add some black bars above and below frame because I'm a real filmmaker, Dad! My dad's actually really cool. Uh, and uh, pff, that's it, really. I mean, I guess you could always search for other body motions or different heads to stick on there. It's a really weird world we live in, folks. Now, we poked fun at a lot of things, and there's nothing easier than tearing stuff down, but let me take a quick step back and remind everyone that we're here to celebrate creativity. I want others to reach their full creative potential, and that's why I do this. I respect every single VFX artist out there. It's hard work, you're one of the last people in line for any digital production, and sometimes you're asked to deliver things way before they're ready for prime time. Many of our regular viewers here are probably already familiar with the state of the VFX industry, but if you're not, you should go watch Life After Pi. Or at least Freddy Wong's video on bad CGI. You see, no film is ever finished, it just gets released. That genie is gonna be fine. If that shot from the teaser is even in the final film, it'll look good by then. Don't worry if what you're doing doesn't feel good enough yet. I'd love to throw back to Ren for some wise words. It's, it's way more important to just finish your work and move on to the next thing than it is to give up on what you're currently working on because it's just not good enough. What you're working on right now doesn't really matter. What matters is that you finish it and move on to the next thing because you will learn a lot of things from working on that piece that you can apply to the next thing and fail on that one too. And then you learn from that. You, just, you do that over and over again and before long, suddenly you're getting pretty good at things because you've picked up all these tips and tricks along the way, all these new skills and knowledge bases that help contribute to better effects in the future. Work hard and listen thoughtfully to the advice of others, folks. And then go make that thing, whatever your thing is. Now for all our trap code particular and form users out there, I'm giving away the template I used to make these blown sand titles. The download links are below. Also, if you like these videos, please click subscribe below. You can enable notifications to make sure you don't miss our upcoming Captain Marvel edition of Cheap Tricks. It's coming out in just a few weeks and I think you're gonna love it. Until then, 
I hope life gives you everything you ever wished for.